y'all. Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And today we're going to do chapter eight, the judges era of our 30 days to understanding the Bible book. I hope y'all are having a great day and thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm gonna make it short today because Chris has a doctor's appointment. So we're just gonna hit uh, the highlights like we normally do. Um, and I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about personal stuff today. Um, we have the judges era which was Judges through Ruth in the Bible. And um, he starts out telling about a lady that wore rags and dug in garbage cans. Hello, Kay. And it says that they figured out that this garbage Mary had a lot of money. She had stocks in some really big companies, had a lot of money in the bank. So it says she had wealth at her disposal, okay? But she would rather go through the garbage than to use the resources that she had. And he tells us that that's like the Israelites with um, Canaan because they wouldn't listen to God. So their resources were promises of God, but they did not use them. Okay? Um, so... It starts out with the review that goes in your charts, and I'm sure y'all figured out how to, to fill that out since we've done it so much. But our new uh, era is Judges. Our figure is Samson, and the location is Canaan, okay? And uh, the storyline summary is Samson, the first blank. No, I'm sorry. It's not the first blank. <laughs> <clears throat> Samson and others were chosen as judges, is the first blank, judges. To govern, is the second blank, the people for 400 years. Now, this is a long period of time that this happened over. 400 years is a, a long, long time. So it starts out, um, it says that there are four main subjects in this era, and that is judges, rebellion, Cycles and Ruth. So if you're taking notes, there's four main subjects in this judge era, and it's judges, number one, two is rebellion, three is cycles, C-Y-C-L-E-S, and the fourth is Ruth, okay? The judges is the leaders of Israel. Now, um, it tells us, of course, this is not a judge that sits in the courthouse like we're used to. They are actually political military leaders of Israel, and they weren't um, prophets either. Now, a couple of them are considered prophets, but uh, they're really their political uh, leaders of Israel, and that's how they got their power, okay, through leading them through all of this uh trouble that the people seem to get in over and over and over. Um, so it says that it starts with Deborah as the first judge. And I found this very interesting because this study starts with a woman named Deborah as a judge, which just blows my mind that that would have happened back in those days, that she would have had political power. And then it ends with Ruth, which is another woman in this era. So I found that very interesting in this time. <clears throat> and I told Chris, I wondered if it was because the people were so bad and mean there wasn't a man fit to use at the time that God used Deborah, which is very possible. Uh, it says Deborah was a woman judge early in the judges era. And if you go back and study Deborah, she was actually a prophet as well. Okay. Um, Gideon, who defeats an army of thousands with only 300 men, is another judge. Then we have Samson, and he's the one that we've heard stories of that meets Delilah, and he's really strong, and she wants to cut his hair, and she does cut his hair, so he loses his strength. That's Samson. He's the most famous judge whose fabulous strength has captured our imagination for thousands of years. Then we have number four, Samuel. Samuel, um, is, it says he's a transition, a transitional character held in very high regard in Scripture, who was both the last judge and the first prophet. 
I found that interesting too because he doesn't say that Deborah is a prophet. He says the first prophet is Samuel. So I'm not sure what's up with that either. I need to go study that. Um, so number two. So we have uh, under the judges era, we have four main subjects. One is judges. Under judges, put Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Gideon, G-I-D-E-O-N, Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, and Samuel, S-A-M-U-E-L. Those are the four main judges. I'm sure there were more than that, but uh, because as much trouble as they got in. Now, number two is rebellion. We all know what rebelling is, and that's what these people did. It says that Moses instructs Israel to do three things. He instructs them to destroy the inhabitants of Canaan. He wants them all dead. He wants them to avoid intermarriage with the Canaanites. Well, if you killed them, then you wouldn't marry them, right? And he wants to shun the worship of their gods. Now, what the Israelites did not do is go in and kill everybody. And you think that sounds harsh, but this is how sin works, okay? God knew that his people were different than the other people. And he told them plainly to go in there and destroy everything when they, when they uh, conquered Canaan. And there was a lot to conquer, okay? And it would have been a lot of killing. But the problem was they didn't kill everybody. Then they married these Canaanite women and they worshiped their gods. So naturally, when they weren't following the real God, they ran into trouble and uh, were rebellious. And that's why all of this had to happen. Our third point is cycles. So you have judges, you have rebellion, and then you have cycles. And what the cycles are, it says that these people would do the same things over and over. It's just like having a kid when they're little and you say, well, let's just pick something simple. Let's say, and y'all might not think it's, let's say you say, don't back talk me or don't get a cookie out of the cookie jar. Well, you give them a spanking and the next thing you know, their hands in the cookie jar again, or they're saying something they shouldn't say. Um, so was Israel, okay? So it says that the repetition of their misfortunes were in cycles. The first cycle was sin. The second cycle was their discipline from God. And what he did is he used military force and he made them be under the control of other countries. So kind of like slavery. So it was sin and then slavery, pretty much, if you want to sum it up in a nutshell. Then it was, th the third thing they did is they repented, acknowledged their sin, and said, I'm sorry. Then God would raise up a judge, like the ones we just talked about, who would deliver them from their bondage and, and uh, use their military strategies Um. And then the fifth one is they were free again. So they would free the land of oppression. The people would listen for a while. And let's say sometimes it would last, uh, let's see, this one. I think it would last different times. Like one might last seven years, one might last 40 years. But regardless, the people would forget all about the judges, all about the things they learned. And then they would get into trouble again. So it was just cycle after cycle after cycle. Now, number four is Ruth. They end it with Ruth. And I think it's because uh, Ruth was actually written down during the time of the, this judging era. Okay. And it was a woman who lived during the area of the judges. She's an example of moral and spiritual strength. And Ruth is a good story. Uh, if you want to read a story today, I think it's interesting that Deborah was a woman who started the military strategies, and then we end with Ruth. So if you want to go in and do some extra reading today or this week, try to read about Deborah and read about Ruth. Um, 
So at the end, all we do is our little self test and we and we fill in the blanks. And he's got judges are the leaders of Israel. He's got Ruth is a modern a model woman. Somebody we could all take um uh a look at and look at her life and apply it in hours. Then he says, rebellion is the breaking of God's law. Now, it's very obvious here. These Israelites went through uh, seven cycles breaking his laws. Um, it's very obvious that even if they had the law of God, they couldn't follow it, okay? And then you have uh, cycles or repetition of Israel's misfortunes. Okay, so then our summary, we'll go through that again. Just write down Samson and others were chosen as judges to govern the people for 400 years. Now, he goes on in the end of this chapter, and those of y'all that don't have a book, this is not going to help you very much, um, but he talks about the geography of the judges, and since we didn't really talk about the battles that they faced, um, it's kind of hard to follow. Um, I don't think that most of us are going to remember where these places are, but if you have a book, he gives you uh, numbers on this page, and he and they're the numbers of the, the areas that they had to, that took control of the Israelites and had them under bondage. And then God would uh, free them, okay? Those areas are number one, Philistia. It's P-H-I-L-I-S-T-A. T-I-A, I'm sorry. It's like Phil, P-H-I-L-I-S-T-I-A. The second one was Moab, M-O-A-B. The third place was Mesopotamia. It's the only one that's way across from Canaan. All these other places are real close to where Canaan is. They surround the, the Sea of Galilee, the, the Jordan River, and the Dead Sea. But now the Mesopotamia is all the way over where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers are. So it was a lot longer uh, for them to be back over there again. Uh, number four is Canaan, C-A-N-A-A-N. -A -A number five is Ammon, A-M-M-O-N. And number six is Midian, M-I-D-I-A-N. These were the areas that would take control of the Israelites and put them under bondage that God would have to raise up the judge to free them from. Now, when you look at this, you're thinking, good Lord, they just couldn't behave. Of course they couldn't behave. It's not like it is today. And keep in mind that in the Old Testament, uh, the Holy Spirit wasn't around. God, uh, Jesus Christ had not come and died for our sin. And so everybody was lost. Everybody. And the only people who uh, could even, were even the least bit godly, were the ones who would look at the law and follow God's law and do the best that they could with their own flesh and self, which we all know as Christians is absolutely hard. If we didn't have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit living in us, we would be just like these people. You think, how could they do that over and over when, when God parted the rivers and the, and the, uh, the dead say, I mean, how could, how could they do that? They did it because... They were in their flesh like we are before we're saved. And they they didn't, that's all they could do. And that's why God said when you go into that land, kill the people, you know, destroy the God, everything they, they have, destroy, uh, and do not marry these women. Because he knew that if they married the women, the women would be worshiping their gods, and the men would eventually go that way. That's how sin works, Okay. Uh, even if we think that we're doing something little, little turns into big, and then before you know it, it's consumed you and you're in trouble, okay? But always remember, just like the Israelites, we can cry out to God and say, God, help us. Uh, we can uh, be delivered through Jesus Christ, okay? 
So y'all remember that. If there's anything in your life that seems to be taken over, then um, give it to God and uh, confess it. Ask him to forgive you and um, that will be good, okay? Um, it is about 8.12 and Chris's doctor's appointment is at 8.30. He is going back for his tick bites because when I went to, I, I took May to the dermatologist yesterday and she asked, was he put on an antibiotic just in case he got a tick disease? And I said, no, the only two antibiotics he were, was on were for MRSA and staph. So we're going to the doctor and let them put him on an antibiotic just to kind of be on the safe side. That's more for the tick uh, born diseases. Uh, so we're going to say our prayers this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you get a chance to read about Deborah because that is very interesting that the first military leader that God used in this time was a woman. And she also, at the end of her battle, it's a beautiful, beautiful poetic type uh, writing where she's praising God and I encourage you to read that. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for t today. We thank you for the sun that has come up and that you've given us another day to shine your light through us. We pray that you would give us the courage and the strength that we need for today and to be strong for you, Lord. Help us not be like the Israelites who uh, continually uh, seem to fall into sin. Please help us um, die with our flesh daily and come to you and let the Holy Spirit guide and lead and direct us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I will see y'all tomorrow and we will be talking about the kingdom era, starting with the first key, which is great. David, a man after God's own heart. Bye, y'all. Love ya.